Hello my friends, welcome back to a new video. So on my channel I've made a bunch of videos on the topic of finance, on saving money, tips on saving money, that today I wanted to touch on the side of money coming in, so earning money, especially in the past one to two years. Um, how I've earned my money, some struggles, some new revelations, and what I'm planning to do down the road. Some of you assume that I do YouTube full-time and some of you know that I have five jobs and are wondering how do I even manage, how do I do this? So uh, this is my story, my journey of mm, me earning money. <laughs> so back in the middle of 2001, I was in a little bit of a dilemma deciding on what I want to do job wise and I decided to not pursue the classical I guess traditional path of getting a nine-to-five office job but instead pursuing my passion of YouTube up until then I've done YouTube for I think it was two years or so and was starting to pick up so I really felt like this could be a job or career opportunity for me that I wanted to pursue further. So I was earning about 500 euros a month, which isn't a lot, but my plan definitely was to take YouTube further, to grow it bigger, and in the meantime to get a, here in Germany it's called a mini job, so a job that earns up to about 500 euros a month, that is tax-free, and then in total I'd earn about a thousand euros a month, which according to my calculations was enough to live very modestly, but in exchange be able to pursue my passion and do what I love for a living. In addition to that, in January, so about five to six months later, I started an art brand. Art is also something that I'm really passionate about and that I wanted to pursue further. And basically I opened an Etsy shop and also like an Instagram channel called Haven Art Design where I would show my art and sell my art as well. And that would be like an additional income source that I didn't put too much pressure on, but of course, the more the better in a sense. I just wanted another income stream doing what I loved, which I think is something that we all want, doing something that we love and earning a living with doing what we love. So my plan basically for 2022 was to grow YouTube. That was my number one goal. But at the same time, I was also dealing with a little bit of pushing myself too much and feeling myself burning out a little and getting more accustomed to slower living. So that was kind of a conflict for me. On one hand, slow living, being more intentional, taking care of my mental health, but then on the other hand, really going all in and trying to grow YouTube as fast as possible. But about a year, a year later, I noticed that my YouTube hasn't wasn't really growing. I mean, it was growing in the sense of the community on YouTube was growing, but when it comes to the income, which is what we care about when it comes to our job, that wasn't growing at all. And I was slowly starting to get a little nervous. On top of that, we had moved city and that was quite expensive. And our living costs was a little bit more expensive than we anticipated. Also with everything politically going on, with Corona still being a thing back in 2022 and then the war here in Europe, everything was just a little bit more uncertain and I found myself dipping into my savings more than I would have liked to. So I started to take on an additional job. I started working part-time at a cafe. It was about 20 hours a week and it was minimum wage so I didn't earn much. So by that point I had a 20 hour cafe job, a 10 hour a week mini job at the theater that I had gotten a while back and then I had my YouTube, then I had my Haven Art Design company and it was just a lot going on. Also, I got the opportunity to babysit for my, for my neighbors a little bit and that was just like a little bit more income. But in my mind, this was all supposed to be just transitional, just for a short while until YouTube took off. That was still my main goal. So I was truly living the bohemian, starving artist lifestyle, really working my butt off 
not running much, trying to pursue this passion of mine and to create this creative job for me to be able to live off of that. So I definitely knew that all these five jobs together was going to be too much in the long run, but since I had only planned it to be short term, it was kind of like a little sprint for me to get my YouTube kind of kicked off. I had this huge confidence and belief in my channel. I was so sure that in six months, not more, I was able to, was going to be able to live off of the income from my YouTube channel. In my mind, the growth on YouTube was linear. So the more time and effort I work, I put in, I will see linear growth month by month, year by year. With YouTube, it's a little tricky. Yes, the community has grown, but the income has not really grown. So the income on YouTube is a little bit complex and sometimes maybe hard to understand, but it really depends on certain virality of certain videos. So if a certain video takes off and the ads on that video do really well, then that will earn me quite a lot of money. But it is pretty random in a sense that it is not a linear growth. It will be stagnant for a while and then shoot up because the video was doing well and then be stagnant for a while. So the income on YouTube was really an up and down and was, even though I was putting so much more effort and time into the channel, the outcome of the earnings just wasn't as steady. And of course, I'd also go gone the route that many other YouTubers go down and that is to look for other companies that sponsor your videos, but because I'm someone that is very particular about the products and the brands that I advertise for, I don't want to be advertising for just anything. It has to be something that I truly would recommend to my friends and my family that I really, really believe in. And that was really difficult. And many companies were only willing to give out free product, but not compensate the work specifically that I was doing. and also the trust that I was giving them by sharing the product with you guys. And with all those jobs that I was juggling, it was just becoming too much. In addition to that, the cafe job, I was just really disliking. It went against a lot of my morals and my values and it felt like it was a little bit of a toxic work environment that I wanted to get out of. But I found myself in a place where I had to really reflect on my goals and my plan since it wasn't really working out as I had hoped, which I firstly had to come to terms with since I was so focused on that plan and on that goal. So I had to take some time to reevaluate, to shift paths, to change my plan a little bit. So I decided to give up all those tiny little jobs and work for a traditional nine to five office job and to use my degree to get one of those jobs. Though so that means I'll be earning so much more since I do have a university degree in media and communications. And my plan is to work at the office job part time so that I still have enough time for my creative pursuits like YouTube and Haven art design. Those are still top priority for me. And luckily, Post Corona, a lot of companies are willing to let you work remote. And that means I can also incorporate more travel and living in different cities with the remote office job. Now you could ask, why did I do this earlier? Two years ago when I was deciding on taking an office job or doing YouTube full time, I guess I was a dreamer in the best sense that I had so much confidence and belief and passion for this channel that I wanted to take a leap of faith and to try this out. And I'm so glad I did because if I hadn't done this, I'm pretty sure I would have regretted it in the sense that what if? And through working all these various jobs, I get got to live this free spirited bohemian lifestyle that I really enjoyed as well, even though it was tough. And I got to meet so many different people, got to experience so many different jobs that have also kind of helped me see things in a different light and helped me appreciate certain other aspects. I guess a lot of times you just see YouTubers living off of their YouTube channel full time. And while that is the dream, I think it just isn't a reality for everyone, at least not that quickly. It is not really in our control how well our channel takes off. All we can do is put out our best and put out something that is 
true to us that is authentic it's like being an artist of course the dream of every artist is to live off of your artwork art out off of just painting or creating but that isn't the reality for everyone and a lot of artists need to are either starving artists scraping by or have patrons of some sort that are helping them financially or just have a day job. And it is something that I realized that is also okay. I felt like you had to pursue your passion and the goal was to live off of your passion, to monetize your passion and anything other than that was considered a failure. But I've come to realize that it's okay to be my own patron, to have a day job that supports my creative work. And the upside to that also is that since the money is coming from me, the decision of power is also coming from me. So if I were to monetize my channel by having com other companies sponsor my channel, I would have to listen so much more to what they want. In a sense, I also have to make room for their vision and their decisions on my channel. But if I'm sponsoring myself, it can truly 100% be just my decisions. And same with the paintings that I put up on Haven Art Design, I realized that if I put such a big focus on monetizing my art, I would have to also cater to what kind of art do people want, what kind of art do people like, um, instead of solely focusing on what art do I want to create. That way I can be more daring with my art, more controversial with my art, and I think that is where true creativity can shine through. So I'm basically planning to go from five jobs to just two, so YouTube and a part-time office job that is just going to be so much more worth it time versus money-wise that I have to put in. And Haven Art Design, of course, I'm still going to have that and keep that, but I'm going to step away so much more from the monetization aspect of it. Of course, I will still offer some of my paintings for sale, but a lot of them I also will just keep to myself and just create what I feel like creating without worrying so much about whether this is going to sell. So this is my current plan, my current situation. Of course, this might shift as well. I'm not saying that I'm never going to take any sponsors on YouTube, but I will definitely have less pressure to take up sponsors for my YouTube channel. And that way I can have more creative and directorial freedom over my channel, which I think is going to be really nice. If someday I'm lucky enough to be able to live off of creating YouTube or creating art, then of course that is a dream. But if that is not the case, that's also fine. I am set up financially in a way. But if my plan changes down the road, that's also fine. And that is something that I also had to learn that I was so set on a specific plan that it's okay to sometimes shift your plan, to change your plan. We change as a person, circumstances change, our desires change, our capacity for juggling things change, and it's fine to also change your plan. I feel like sometimes we have this pressure of having everything figured out. It made me feeling ashamed that I'm now stepping back from pursuing YouTube's as aggressively as before. Maybe I feel like some in some way I've failed my plan, but we want to see things in our lives as experiments. So this was an experiment that I went down and it didn't turn out as I'd hoped and that's also fine. We are not fortune tellers. We don't know how things are going to turn out. And now I'm just trying a different experiment and see how that turns out. At this point in my life, I'm also so thankful that I do have a university degree that is able to give me a higher paying job with better working circumstances, that that is an option for me. So as of now, I'm officially on the job hunt for a traditional office job. In the beginning, I'll probably do it full time, but then switch over to part time. And I'm also so lucky and happy that that is an option here in Germany, that you have the right to switch to part time after six months of working at the job. So yeah, I'm excited for the future and what it has to hold. I'm trying to keep my expectations on the down low and just to be open and 
receiving to whatever is to come. Hopefully this was interesting and inspiring for you to give you some ideas of ways that you can earn money. It doesn't have to be a traditional route. It can be whatever you make it to be. And it's also okay to change your plan down the road. You don't have to stick to something that you said you were going to do a few years back. So thank you so much for listening to me, for spending your time with me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.